Hi there, this is Terry from Stamping Magic. Welcome back to my channel. Today's project is this really cute treat holder. Now I used some of the Animal Expedition papers for the main body and also for the image. And I used a sentiment from the Thankful Thoughts stamp set. I've sized this one so it will hold one of our Cadbury's cream eggs but you could put any little chocolate or sweet treats in here. Now the construction of this one is very similar to a previous video I did for this mini Easter basket and I'll put a link to this one in the information cards at the top right of the screen. At the end of this video I'm going to show you several different samples um, that I've created of this treat holder and I'm also going to explain how you can adjust the size of it so you can make it narrower and taller if you want to and it's very simple to do this so say, stay tuned until the end and I will show and tell then. Now let's get started. I have a scrap piece of Call Me Clover cardstock here and I'm going to stamp this sentiment from Thankful Thoughts onto it using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. Now I'm going to cut this out using one of the dies from the Petals and More Thinlets dies. Now as you can see this banner piece is much longer than I need. So I'm going to show you later on how I reduce the size of this. I have a piece of the Animal Expedition paper here and I'm going to use the largest scalloped oval from the Layering Ovals Framelit set and I'm going to cut two of these. And then I have another sheet of the Animal Expedition paper and I'm going to punch out one of the giraffe images and I'm going to use the one and a quarter circle punch to do this. I have another piece of Call Me Clover and another of Crumb Cake here and I'm going to use two of the layering circle dies to create layers to go behind my image. So for the Crumb Cake I'm using the second smallest plain circle and then for the Call Me Clover I'm using the second smallest scalloped circle. To cut your sentiment piece you want to position your banner die to the left side of the sentiment where you want it to cut and run it through the Big Shot. And then you position the right side of the banner die when you want, where you want it to cut on the other side. And the die just sort of slots over the sentiment piece that you've already cut so it will stay nice and straight. I have a piece of crumb cake cardstock here that measures 3 and 7 eighths by 2 and 3 eighths. And I'm going to score this on the long side at 1 and a quarter inches from each edge and half an inch on the short side from each edge. So I'm going to score first of all at one and a quarter and then two and five eighths and on the short side because I don't like scoring at half an inch I'm going to do both sides at one and seven eighths of an inch. I have my two large scalloped ovals that I cut from the Animal Expedition papers here and I want to score these to create a base. Now because of the shape obviously it's difficult to score a straight line with the oval because it moves about, it won't sit nicely into that corner. So I found the best way to um, score a straight line was to just create a little mask and I've just cut another large scalloped oval from copy paper and I folded this in half to give me the center line then I'm placing that on top of my 
animal expedition oval and I'm lining up that centre line with one of the grooves on my Simply Scored board. This will ensure that I'm going to score this oval straight. And then I'm going to score down at two and five eighths of an inch. And then I just need to repeat this for the second one. So I'm putting the copy paper oval over the other one, making sure that line is going down through one of the grooves and then I'm scoring at two and five eighths of an inch. You want to punch out two half inch circles from crumb cake cardstock and I'm going to use these later to reinforce the holes I make for the ribbon. Now to make the tray for the inside of the treat holder, all you have to do is cut up the score line and then notch in on the corner tab. So it's a straight cut and then notch. Straight and then notch again. Fold on all the scored lines and then burnish them with your bone folder. Mark the position of the hole where you want the ribbon to go through and this needs to be towards the top of your scalloped oval. So quite close to the edge, that's why we're going to reinforce the holes. And then you can punch these with the eighth of an inch handheld punch and you can punch these together. And then if you flip them over, you can cover the holes you've just created with the half inch circles. And then you can repunch the holes through those half inch circles. And you have to do these separately this time, it's too thick to do together. Then go ahead and fold on the scored lines. Right, now I'm going to attach the tray to the ovals. And the first thing you need to do is to add glue to that centre tab. And then I'm going to line up the fold on that tab with the score line on the oval and just make sure it's centered so I'm just doing this by eye it doesn't have to be exact and then just press that tab down to stick it then you lift the piece up so lift the tray up and you want to add glue between the two score lines and then press down and that will stick your base so again, exactly the same for the other oval. Add glue to that middle tab. Align the fold with the score line on the oval and centre it. And then just press it down to stick it. Lift the whole thing up and add glue between the two score lines and press down. The two side sections should still be completely free, they haven't been glued at all. I'm now going to glue the side sections. So you want to add glue to the tabs on one side, we're going to work on one oval at a time. Now you're going to position the top of the fold on that tab in between two scallops and normally they're um, six scallops up and then you'll um, position it. You just don't want it to show from the right hand side so if you position it too low like here you'll be able to see it. So just move it up until you can't see it from the right side and as I said that's normally about six scallops high. Give it a good, good press down using your bone folder. 
then you can add glue to the opposite side and repeat the process. So I'm just positioning the top of that fold in between two of the scallops on each side. I've added my chocolate egg inside and I'm using an Oreo one this time and then I have a length of braided linen trim. This is approximately 10 inches or 25 centimeters long and I'm just going to tie it into a bow on one side of the treat holder. I'm going to layer up the image next and I'm just using wet glue to position the image onto the crumb cake circle. Then I'll add dimensionals onto the back of the crumb cake and position it onto the scallop circle. I've added more dimensionals onto the back of the Call Me Clover scallop circle and also the sentiment and then I can remove the backings and position these onto the treat holder. And there we go, he's all finished. Really cute and dumpy. Very sweet. I think these treat holders could have many uses, not just for Easter, but I mean, this one in particular would be fantastic as a party favor for a kid's birthday, or you could um, have them for wedding favors or place settings for a meal, anything you like. Now this one, um, I used the All My Love papers to create it and also the beautiful bouquet stamp set and the same with this second one. Now this one, I used the Petal Palette stamp set and the Share What You Love specialty papers. I think the sentiment came from beautiful bouquet Now this next one I used the, um, I think it was called Botanical Butterfly, the celebration papers to create it and this one is actually taller than all the other ones and the reason for this is I reduced the width of the tray inside so instead of cutting it at two and three eighths of an inch wide I just cut it at two inches wide and that made the treat holder slightly slightly taller. Now this last one is much taller than all the others and again I've created the tray in the same way I've reduced it to two inches but the main difference on this one is that I've scored the oval differently. So instead of scoring at two and five eighths, I've scored at three inches and that's made it much taller. So you can see you can adjust these quite easily. So this is the tray for my original and then this is the amended tray. I've left it at three and seven eighths and I've just reduced the width to two inches. Everything else is exac exactly the same. I'm still scoring uh, one and a quarter inches from either side and half an inch on the short side. So it's all exactly the same. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notifications bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Bye for now.